Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. I did this painting of Adventure Time, another cartoon that I'm yet to see. But um, I've been getting a lot of requests to do this. So apparently everyone loves it and thinks it's funny. And apparently even my mum's seen it. So yeah, I've got to catch up on that. Hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I tried to create my own like scene here, even though I haven't seen the show. So it was pretty fun to be creative. Anyway, thank you to all the patrons as, as normal. Um, you guys really help support the channel and you guys mean the world to me and all the viewers who come back. We've uh, passed 5,000 subs, so I'm pretty happy about that. Next aim is 10,000. And yeah, thanks for watching. And here's Luke in three, two, one. <laughs> Well, 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 I knew you guys would all be back. You tried to stay away, but you just couldn't. I told you that, I tried telling you, you can run, but you can't hide. And I also said, if you try to run, you're just gonna be coming straight back to this channel. And boy, was I right. So, welcome back. Hold up, wait. Oi, Jay, are you seriously putting your bread in the microwave? The toaster's right next to it. What are you doing? No, 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 you don't microwave the bread to toast it. That's why it's called a toaster. Cause you put the bread in the toaster and then it comes toast. Fucking hell. I'm so sorry guys. Um, he's been doing this thing lately where he puts the bread in the microwave thinking it's gonna toast it, but it just really warms the bread up. And I don't know, I don't know guys, it's crazy. Don't, don't look at me. I know we're born from the same fucking sperm in the same fucking stomach at the same time, but don't ask me where he gets it from. Cause I don't do that crap. So, anywho guys, uh, we're going to browse the subreddit of Am I the Arsehole? Because I just love reading some of them. Because they just really, some of them just really blow my mind. Like, boom, pa. Yeah, anyway, today's topic is, Am I the Arsehole for telling my boyfriend that his masculinity was fragile after he refused to buy me pads? Okay, so straight off the bat, my opinion is, no, you're not the asshole. I can think of a million other things more embarrassing than that. In fact, I've done a million other things more embarrassing than that. Just look at my YouTube channel, The Janoskians. There's a lot of stuff there. So, yeah, so I don't, so no, I don't think you're an asshole. And yeah, his masculinity is a bit fragile if he's too uh, afraid to buy pads. But I might be a bit surprised. Maybe she is an asshole for calling him that because I don't know the story. So let's just, let's just get straight into it. I moved in with my boyfriend, who is 24 years old, of two years, a couple months ago. We haven't had any problems before this argument. Things have been going pretty well. It's always like the two, three month barrier of moving in where things just start to fucking crash and fall apart. Where you really find out the true characteristics of your partner. This is when it all just comes hitting you like a fucking truck. A couple days ago, I got my period. It came early and I'd ran out of pads. I couldn't leave to buy some because I bleed pretty heavily and I would have bled through my pants. So I asked my boyfriend if he could buy pads for me from the drugstore because it was late. He immediately said no. I was shocked because I wasn't really expecting that. I asked him why. He said that he didn't want the cashier to see him buying pads. Why is he so concerned about the cashier's thoughts unless he didn't want to fuck him? Back to the story. At this point I started laughing because that was hilarious but he wasn't joking. He just glared at me. I told him that the cashier would obviously know it wasn't for him. Plus, the cashier would definitely not care what he was buying, and he still refused. I told him that he could go to the self-checkout machine if he was so insecure, but he said that he didn't want anyone to see him with the pads because they'd think he was a tranny. Yeah, this guy is really fragile. You weren't joking, like that, that was a perfect thing you could have said to him. And if he got upset after you called him that, then, He's 100% fragile. I told him that he was childish and that his masculinity was really fragile if he couldn't even buy pads for his own girlfriend. He got mad and went out. I had to bunch up toilet paper as a makeshift pad, wear black pants and a long cardigan and go buy the pads myself. My boyfriend has been ignoring me ever since. I've been thinking that maybe I pushed it too far. So, am I the asshole for telling my boyfriend that his masculinity was fragile after he refused to buy pads for me? Well, sister, from another mister, I would really like to fist ya. Short answer, no. How fragile is your boyfriend really? First of all, he's very fragile about the cashier who he has no relationship with, I'd assume, because no one has relationship with the cashier other than small talk, if, you, if it's your local. He's fragile 
to just go to the self-serve checkout and buy pads in case a member of the public who, who most likely doesn't know sees him. And he's fragile when he gets told he's fragile. That's a very, very fragile guy you got there. I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're raising a little bitch. It's not your boyfriend. It's a little bitch. Yeah, if I were you, I'd just quickly go to return him real quick um, from wherever the fuck you found him. Try to replace him. Say, hey, there's something wrong with this one. Can I just have like a, a new one? That's what I do in this situation. Don't worry about him not texting you back. He's actually doing you the favor here. You should be the one not replying to him, but it's the other way around. He sounds extremely immature. He's got a little bit of a high school mentality going on in regards of a cashier caring about what he's buying. Yeah, he's just got a lot of growing up to do. He sounds really out of touch. I genuinely don't think any of the staff working at that store would care about what he's buying. They won't even question him, let alone care about what he's buying. If I, if I was working at a store and I saw a guy buying pads, I'd put A and B together and come up with C, the conclusion that obviously he's buying them for someone else. And even if he was buying them for himself for whatever fucked up reason, who cares? People have got their own lives to worry about. Anyone working a nine to five just honestly wants to be out of there. So the, the, the last thing on their mind is, oh crap, why has that guy got pads? I better like, I better make a big scene in front of everyone and let everyone know that that guy's buying pads because it's, it's a big problem right now. I bet people like scanning items really don't even notice what they're scanning. It's really, they got a job to do. They just want to scan everything as fast as they can. They're not just going to be like, let's see. Are you, you buying you are you buying that? You, why why are you buying that? You can't buy that. You're a boy, and why would you need it? Obviously, if you're buying this, it's for you. It couldn't be for anyone else. Why are you buying these pads? Everyone, gather around. Everyone, everyone. Hey manager, can you get all the staff to register at three real quick? There's a guy buying pads. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it doesn't happen like that. You're not in high school. Like no one's gonna call you up on that. So. Damn, you're raising a little boy there, sweetheart. You're raising a little boy. If he doesn't apologize, clean up his act, and just as a test, say, hey, I'm out of pads, go. And if he doesn't go, hey, at least you're not married, you didn't sign a contract, and you can uh, get out of there as fast as you please. This girl's got an update, so I'm just gonna read it. I confronted my boyfriend an hour ago. We sat down together, and I told him that I didn't like how he acted about buying pads for me. He said that he didn't feel like he had to, no, he, de he definitely didn't have, have to, but he's your boyfriend, so it would have been nice instead of you walking to the shops with blood going down your fucking pants like you just got shot in the fucking pussy. It would have just been nice and considerate of your boyfriend to, you know, just put his embarrassment aside, his fragileness aside as well, and just get you the fucking pads. So he said he didn't feel like he had to and that I could have held it in and drove to the drugstore to get the pads myself. Now, I don't know how it works with girls in the periods. I don't know if you can just hold it in. I'm 99.9% .9 sure you can't just hold it in. It's not like um, a bladder. Let, let, let's, let's whack this guy in the nose. Let's whack this guy in the nose. And if blood starts pouring out, why don't we just say to him, hey, why didn't you just hold it in? So tell him it doesn't really work like that when it comes to periods and blood. I told him that you can't hold in menstrual blood. Yes, I was right. Yes, I'm so smart. But he insisted that I could have done it for a few minutes and that it wouldn't have been a big deal. We went back and forth over this, so I just dropped it. Speaking of dropped it, is that what his mum did to him as a baby? It kind of seems like that. This guy must be really good looking or something because he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. Sounds like he's got all sawdust up in his head instead of a fucking brain. I asked him, like most of you mentioned, what would happen when we have kids and he'd have to take care of me and buy me nipple cream? take me to the washroom, etc. He said that I would not need those things because I should be able to do them on my own after giving birth. Then I asked him about the tranny comment. He said that he didn't understand why people would want to change the gender they were born in. That basically cemented everything for me. I felt completely betrayed and humiliated. Over the two years, you never discussed any of it or? It's all coming out now, huh? Did you guys talk about anything when you were in a relationship or? Or was it just a, a honeymoon phase for two years? When you're dating someone, that is the best time to find out all their political views, anything that you might hold against them or, or might be a red flag in the future, that is the time to get it all out. I don't think you should leave your political thoughts till after your two years into a relationship or some people until they get married. That is not the time. I can't believe I spent two years of my life with a guy who holds these views and I can't believe I was too oblivious to it. I just feel so dumb. I told him that we need to break up. 
He cussed at me and told me that I was exaggerating and that I was being a little bitch. I told him that I'd send him half of my month's rent. Then I packed my bags and drove to my parents' house without saying another word. I'm going to be staying with my parents until I sort myself out. I'm feeling really down right now because I really did love him, but I also feel relieved. Yeah, well, you just got to learn next time. Find out your partner's ideologies, beliefs, um, views when you're dating. Otherwise, two years down the road, you're going to run into these problems where you might find out you're dating a little boy who's embarrassed to buy something from the store because the local cashier, whose name might be Raj, might care about what he's buying. If the cashier did say anything, this is your time to stand up like a man and say, hey, why don't you mind your own fucking business and get me a bag, bag boy? Something like that, you know? This is your chance to prove your masculinity. This is your chance to stand up to the cashier or anyone who gives you shit. Say, hey, I've got a girl at home who's dying. She's bleeding out of her vagina. I need those pads. And if you don't get them to me, I'm going to fucking get a gun and shoot your fucking brains out. See, that's all. This is your chance to prove how much of a man you are. Yeah, he doesn't, if he doesn't see that, he's just going to be a little boy his whole life. He's going to be scared. Uh, he's going to care what people think. Then I'm sorry. He's 24, 25 years old. He's not going to change. It's just who he is. And if that's not the type of guy that you want, pack your bags and fuck off. You're out. So yeah, I've been watching a lot of Dragon Dens lately, which is um, an entrepreneur show where they pitch an, a possible investment to a bunch of investors. When the investors don't like it, they give their reason and then they say, for that reason, I'm out. That's all you have to say to him. Say, I can't handle a little boy and for that reason, I'm out. All right, guys. Woo. It's been truly amazing. That's a wrap of another episode. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. Now I'm gonna put some comments from last episode. Thank you to those who commented uh, regarding the topic of the video. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later. All right, take care guys. Bye-bye. Comments from last video brought to you by Luke fucking Brooks.